All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending this virtual college exploration event for Indiana students. Just a quick couple quick housekeeping items. Uh, how do you ask questions? You can use the Q&A button to type your questions to the presenter at any time. Your camera and microphone are both off and you are muted uh, and your video is off as well. Be sure to check out the additional sessions that might be available. Uh, the schedule is at inacac.org slash virtual hyphen college hyphen exploration. And then a recording will be available following these sessions. Uh, all, the all the sessions are being recorded and will be available at the link that I just shared and the link that you can see on the screen. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to our presenter. Thanks again for being with us tonight. Awesome. Bring my presentation up. Alrighty. So my name is Samantha Kotz. I am an assistant director of admissions here at the University of Tampa. Um, so I'm just going to take uh, about 25 minutes to go over uh, a really good overview of the university um, and what we have to offer as well as what the city of Tampa has to offer since we are located right downtown um, in the city and I'll also be including some information about our application process. So go ahead and get started. So as you can see, we are in Tampa, Florida, which is in the middle of the state if you're looking north to south. So we are about three and a half hours from Miami and about um, an hour and a half from Orlando where the theme parks are, so Disney World and uh, Universal. And then of course we are part of the greater Tampa Bay area. So Tampa Bay is made up of Clearwater, St. Pete, and Tampa. Clearwater and St. Pete being about 30 minutes from here and they are home to our beaches. So this is Clearwater Beach pictured here, by far one of the most popular beaches um, for our students to go to. It is one of the closest to campus, uh, right around 25 minutes away. Um, it also is a more touristy beach, lots of shops and restaurants and things to do. I personally prefer a little bit of a quieter uh, beach scene, so I like to go to Fort DeSoto, which is in St. Pete. Um, it's a state park, so again, a little bit of a quieter vibe, but I can definitely guarantee any of the ones that you visit are going to be really, really awesome. And then we have lots of sports and events that go on in the downtown area. So by far one of our most popular events to go to are our Tampa Bay Lightning Games. They just won the Stanley Cup, which was super exciting. So there's been a lot of celebrations recently around that. And typically during a normal season when COVID was not happening, students could get discounted tickets with their student IDs. So you can actually get uh, the tickets for about $20, which is pretty cheap. Uh, it's actually within walking distance of campus as well. So it only takes about 15 minutes uh, to walk downtown to that arena where they play. So hopefully that will be available again soon to our students. We also have our football team, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and the Super Bowl is supposed to be in Tampa in 2021. So we'll see how that goes. And then we also have our baseball team, the Rays, who are uh, very close to being in the World Series. So we've had a really good sports year here in Tampa. Um, and then if you're not interested in sports, that's totally fine. We have plenty of other things that are going on um, in the Tampa area on a regular basis. So if you walk about five minutes over the river into the downtown area from campus, uh, we have the river walk. So that is this picture here. Um, the river walk just provides great access to all kinds of shops and restaurants in the downtown area, as well as different parks and event spaces. So this park that you'll see pictured is where we have lots of different music, music uh, festivals, food festivals, things along those lines that students can typically attend. Again, no large events happening right now, but hopefully those will open back up when it is safe to do so. They also do all kinds of other activities like free yoga in the park. There's museums that surround that area as well as um, the aquarium right downtown. So there's plenty of things to do to keep busy and all of them are within walking distance. So some basics about the University of Tampa. We are a private independent university. So private meaning that in-state and out-of-state tuition is going to be the same. Independent meaning that we are not affiliated with any specific religion. Uh, however, we do have a chapel on campus. It is non-denominational and anyone is welcome to use that space. We have both faith-based organizations and non-faith-based groups that use that space. Um, or if you're just looking for a peaceful place to get away, it's a really awesome spot. Um, there's meditation rooms and things like that in there that are really awesome to visit. 
Then we have an urban environment with a campus feel. So the urban environment is going to be pretty obvious. We are surrounded by the city, only about a five minute walk into the city, like I mentioned before. But at the same time, we maintain a very traditional campus feel. So when you're walking around on campus, you won't see any city streets that cut through the campus. It's very easy to navigate and you very much know where the campus starts and where the city starts. Uh, so it's almost like you're in your own little community within the downtown area. And then we have about 9,600 students on our campus. About 1,000 of those are graduate students. So that makes us a medium-sized university. And those students are coming from all over. So we do have a pretty diverse student population with all 50 states represented, as well as 132 different countries. So about 70% of our students come from out of state. About 10% are international students and about 20% come from within the state of Florida. So overall, you're not going to be alone coming from far away. Um, if you do come from Indiana to Florida, there are plenty of people that are coming that same distance uh, to go to college, which makes that transition a lot easier to know that a lot of the people in your community are going through that same transition. And then our students are considered to be metropolitan, active, and independent. So metropolitan meaning that you like to live in a downtown urban environment, active meaning that you like to get out and get involved, whether that be in those things that I mentioned in the Tampa community or right here on campus, we have over 300 clubs and organizations to be a part of. So everything from clubs related to your major or maybe hobby based clubs like our hammock club or our beach club, those are very popular options with our students, as well as leadership organizations um, like student government, as well as Greek life, about 20% of our students do Greek life. And then independence is probably the piece we like to stress the most because most of our students are coming from so far away. It's definitely important to have that independence to be able to live on your own, uh, be able to get out and get involved and meet people and make UT your home. So it's just important to note that you do need to be self-motivated to be able uh, to do well here. So we always like to encourage students to have that independence. And then going on to things about our academics. So in the uh, medium-sized university that we are. We have about 22 students uh, per class, so that's pretty true to size. I can definitely attest to that as a former UT student. Most of my classes suck right around 22, maybe 25 students um, at most. Uh, I will say if you're in one of our more popular majors, like the sciences, marine science or biology or something like that, those tend to have some courses that are a little bit larger, about 40 to 50 students in those lectures, but they still break down into smaller classes for your labs of about 20 students, allowing for one-on-one -on -one time with your professors and a lot of hands-on learning opportunities. So overall, you're gonna be in pretty small classes, pretty manageable classes. We don't have any 200 or 300 people lecture halls or anything like that. Um, we do encourage faculty members to have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with uh, their students and be accessible. All of our faculty members are absolutely awesome in my experience. They all have office hours outside of their normal class time uh, and 90% hold a PhD or a terminal degree. So meaning the highest degree possible in their field by terminal degree. So they are pretty much experts in their field and they're all going to be able to share those experiences with you. And that provides a really great connection to the fields that you're studying. Uh, for example, I was an advertising and public relations major and I made great um, relationships with my professors who were actively working in the communications field as well as the journalism field and things like that. We also have really awesome accreditations. One that I like to point out is our AACSB accreditation. So that is the highest accreditation you can get for a business school and only 5% of business universities in the US actually hold that accreditation. So something really important and a great distinction when you're applying to jobs, something that will stand out to an employer. If you're looking for more information about your specific program uh, for those accreditations, definitely visit our website because this is just a sampling of those. And then we do accept a couple different applications. So we accept the Common App as well as the Coalition App and our own UT application. The Coalition is more than just an application. It is an organization that we were invited into. We do represent the top 5% of universities in the US by being part of this group. So we were invited into the Coalition because we typically graduate students with less debt. We are more diverse and we also graduate students at a higher rate. So we're definitely proud to be a part of that organization. And then we are a liberal arts university, so we will require you to take courses outside of your major area of study. So even if you choose biology as your major, we're still going to ask you to take some courses in humanities, social sciences, arts, things like that, just to give you a really well rounded education and help you apply your major in a variety of different settings. 
We also ask you to take a first year seminar class uh, that will be like an orientation style class that's going to help you get acclimated to freshman year, find all the resources that we offer on campus to help you build a four year plan and really set you up for success. So those liberal arts components and that first year seminar class add up to what we call the baccalaureate experience, which is our fancy name for our general education component. And if you're interested in the honors program, we do automatically evaluate students for the honors program when you are admitted. So if you're admitted and you have a 3.7 unweighted GPA or a 3.5 unweighted GPA with demonstrated coursework in advanced level courses like AP, IB, things like that, you will automatically um, receive an invitation into the honors program if you qualify. There are a bunch of different benefits to being in the honors program. I definitely speak from personal experience since I was an honors student uh, for one, we have Oxford Semester Abroad, which is one of our several study abroad options specifically for honor students. And that is where we choose three, three students each semester to go to Oxford University in England. Um, the great benefit of that program is you're actually going to pay the same price that you're paying to go to UT uh, to go to Oxford University. And Oxford University is one of the most expensive universities in the entire world. So definitely an awesome benefit. We also have research fellowships specifically for honor students as well as honors courses. So those honors courses are typically capped at a smaller class size of about 17 students. And then they also tend to focus on a really interesting or specific subject area. So an example I can give is I took an honors chemistry class when I was a student and it focused in forensic science. So it just allows you to dive a little deeper into the subject that you're studying and get a little more interesting uh, coursework that might not be covered in a general class. We do have over 200 areas of study here at UT, so there is plenty to explore. We definitely encourage students to try out different classes um, and find their passion. So whether you're undecided, which is our most popular major at UT, or maybe you're acting or looking for a different um, uh, minor or maybe a double major, you can definitely do that and explore those different areas. It's also pretty easy to change majors because we do have mostly direct admit programs. So when you apply to UT, you will just declare your major. Um, you don't have to apply separately with the exception of nursing, athletic training, and education. Those three programs are an exception to that rule. We do require you to complete some prerequisites for those programs and then apply during your sophomore year. And then we also have our performing arts programs which require an audition. But outside of those, those are it's pretty easy to double major and uh, change between majors. No matter what major you do choose, we will emphasize a learn by doing curriculum. So essentially that means we want you to have as many hands-on learning opportunities as possible, whether that be through project-based learning in the classroom, internship opportunities or research opportunities, you're really going to experience your major before you ever go out into that career field. There's just a couple examples of that that I like to share. So our daily innovation and collaboration building. This is where our entrepreneurship center is housed as well as our cybersecurity labs. Uh, so one thing I like to point out in our entrepreneurship center is our pitch room. So it's very similar to Shark Tank if you've ever seen that show. We actually hold a pitch competition several times a year where you can go in and pitch your real business ideas. And we bring in real Tampa investors to hear those ideas and a winner from that competition will actually receive real investor funding for their businesses and start their own businesses before they ever even graduate. So that is a really awesome real world experience. And then we have lots of labs and field experiences for our science students, specifically marine science and nursing are two that we like to highlight. The marine science field station is located about 15 minutes from campus right on the bay. We have several uh, boats that students can take out on the water to do research as well as labs at that facility and labs here on campus. You can also become scuba certified as a marine science student um, or just for fun. If you're looking to do that as a hobby, you can definitely still take those courses outside of marine science, but lots of ways to get hands on there. And then we also have the number one nursing program in the state of uh, state of Florida. So uh, we've had 100% pass rate on the NCLEX exam or the National Nursing Certification exam for the past six out of seven years. So we have highly successful nurses coming out of that program. And we do have our nursing simulation labs on campus to accommodate those uh, nursing skills that students need to learn. So we have all kinds of dummies that move and speak and bleed and do all kinds of things that real humans can do. It's set up like a mock hospital to give students that real uh, medical environment as well. And those nursing simulation labs are located in the Graduate and Health Studies building. So this is one of our newest buildings on campus. It is um, 
home to all of our health sciences, as well as those nursing labs, as well as our physician's assistance program. So that is one of our newest master's level programs. It just started uh, last year, and that is moving very quickly um, through our preliminary accreditations and everything like that. So that is a really exciting addition to our health sciences. And then if you're interested in communications, business, finance, that sort of thing, we have plenty of hands-on learning opportunities for you as well. So we do have our financial trading center located over in our Sykes College of Business. So that's actually where you can have a real portfolio with real money that you trade on the stock market. Um, awesome thing about that program is if you lose the money, it's not yours, so you don't have to worry about it. Unfortunately, if you gain the money, you don't get to keep it. It just goes right back into the program. Nevertheless, a really awesome real world experience there. We also have our radio broadcast facilities as well as our film and video production labs and our black box theater here on campus. We also have our fab lab, which is great for graphic design and digital arts students, have all kinds of great uh, computer design software as well as 3D printers um, and things like that to accommodate students there. And then our newest construction project on campus is the Furman Center for the Arts. So that will be opening in spring of 2021 and it will be our largest academic facility on campus housing all of our performing arts as well as all of our fine arts. So it'll be a really awesome collabor collaborative uh, space to breed creativity in those majors. Uh, it'll have all kinds of performance spaces and practice spaces um, as well. So that will be awesome for our performing arts and fine arts students. And of course, because we are so close to the downtown area, we have awesome access to internship opportunities for pretty much all of our majors here. Um, so we do have only about a five minute walk into the downtown area and we are the only university downtown. So we have great visibility to employers. Our career services department can help you find those internship opportunities. We also hold internship fairs as well as job fairs to connect you with those employers and help you network. Um, just to name a couple of the corporations downtown that students have been involved with for internships. Uh, we do have our Stras Performing Arts Center right downtown. We also have the Florida Aquarium, lots of great financial firms like Raymond James. We also have um, the professional sports teams that I mentioned earlier, so the Tampa Bay Lightning, as well as um, awesome hospitals in the area, including the top research hospital in Florida, Tampa General, right um, about, about five minutes from campus. So really great access to hands-on learning in that way as well. If you're interested in studying abroad and getting that international experience, it's definitely something we encourage, especially with a large international population of students on campus. We want everyone to have that international experience as well. So we do have uh, about a thousand programs in 60 different countries that students can participate in. So lots of options there. And there's about three different ways you can study abroad. So we have the traditional year long or semester long abroad programs that students can do. We also have some unique options like our travel courses. So that's actually where you can take a course here on campus and then travel abroad with your entire class and your professor for about three weeks after the semester ends. It's a great opportunity if you're in a more demanding major, say like nursing, where you can't take an entire semester away from the university or it's more difficult to do so, that fits into your schedule a lot easier, still allowing you to explore a little bit outside of the US. And then we also have semester at sea. So if you're, if you've ever seen Sweet Life of Zack and Cody or Sweet Life on Deck, that is very similar where you're living and learning on a cruise ship. Um, you get to stop at about 15 different ports along the way and stop and do different um, activities in those countries. So it's a really awesome way to see a lot at one time. And then moving on to residence life. So there are a couple important notes here about residence life. The first being that students are not guaranteed housing on campus for their first year. They are prioritized to receive housing. However, it is determined in the order that we receive housing applications. In order to gain access to that housing application, you will need to put down your housing deposit, which is fully refundable up until May 1st. So although it's not due until May 1st, I highly recommend putting it down as soon as possible after you admitted to be able to gain access to that housing application. And there is no risk to it because you can always ask for it back prior to May 1st. So that's just really important if you are looking for housing on campus. That being said, about 92% of our freshmen do choose to live on campus and we are able to accommodate uh, most of those requests in the past. So definitely uh, prioritizing housing, but we always like to mention that students need to get their information as soon as possible to be able to get in line for those housing opportunities. And then freshmen are not allowed to have vehicles for their first year here on campus. I can guarantee you it's not a barrier in any way. When I was a student here, uh, 
I didn't have a car for two years and it was totally fine. There are plenty of ways to get around. Um, obviously, Uber and Lyft are pretty abundant. They weren't when I was a student, they didn't exist yet. So I still got around just fine. And now we have even more opportunities. And then obviously I mentioned a lot of things within walking distance as well. But we do have plenty of other options um, for our students. So we have the downtowner, which is a option very similar to Uber or Lyft. However, it is a completely free option. So you download an app on your phone, plug in where you want to go, and they'll take you anywhere in the downtown area um, completely for free. We also have zip cars you can rent by the hour or by the day right here on campus. You just have to be 18 with a valid driver's license, obviously, to rent those. Uh, but you don't have to be 25 or anything like that. So that is a really nice option if you're trying to get to the beach for the day or something like that. We also have bikes you can check out from the fitness facility completely included in your tuition and a pretty fitting for Florida option or water taxi that goes around the downtown area as well. And then our freshman dorms, we do have six of them. These are all going to be suite style. So two rooms with a bathroom in between. We don't have any community style living here. So you'll never have to share a bathroom with an entire hall. Typically it's going to be a double or a triple that you are placed in connected to another double or triple. So about five to six people sharing a bathroom, not the entire hall like I mentioned before. Um, we do have one dorm that is our honors dorm. So that is McKay Hall right here. If you are an honors student your freshman year, you are able to select to live in our honors dorm. It's not required. However, if you want a more academically focused setting, you definitely choose to live in that building with other honors students. And then this is just an example of what our honors or uh, this is actually in our honors dorm, but this is an example of what our freshman dorms will look like. So it is a double room. Um, you'll see all the furniture there that is all included and then you can definitely decorate it in whatever way you'd like. And then our upperclassmen dorms are going to be more like apartment style. So these are going to have a kitchen and a common area in addition to that suite space. So that shared bathroom and typically they're going to have either four single rooms or a double or two double rooms rather um, connected to that common area and shared spaces. Um, and then about 62% of our entire student population lives on campus. So we typically see freshmen and sophomores living on campus and then juniors and seniors moving off campus to housing in the area. So we do have an off campus housing coordinator who can help students find affordable living in a good location within the Tampa area. There are plenty of options, especially since we are in the city. There's quite an abundance of those resident spaces off campus. We are a very safe and secure campus, so we do have over 35 campus safety officers employed on our staff that patrol 24 seven um, around campus. They're also stationed in our residence halls at night as an extra security precaution. So in addition to having to scan into your dorm, you also have to present your ID to a security officer in the evenings. And we do have our smart mobile alert system as well. So that is a text messaging service to alert students of anything going on in the city area that they need to be aware of. And then they will also receive a text when all of that is clear and they're able to go back to those areas of the city. Then we are a storm ready campus. So if we have any tropical weather that comes our way, uh, tropical storms, hurricanes, even bad thunderstorms, we're going to be completely prepared to deal with those. Uh, and we do receive updates constantly about any weather that might be a threat uh, to UT. And obviously we have all the evacuation plans in place if we were to need to use them. However, we've never had to evacuate campus in the past. And then this is our UT fitness facility. So it was built just after I graduated and I was not able to use it, but it is a really awesome space. We have all of our cardio equipment on that first floor, all of the weight machines on the second floor, and then over 50 group fitness classes a week, which are also all included in your tuition. Everything from yoga to spin classes, kickboxing classes, everything you can think of to stay fit and active. And then we are NCAA division two for our athletics. Uh, we do have 18 national championships, and most of these are going to be recruitment based sports. Uh, so if you are interested in playing, I would definitely recommend reaching out to the coaches uh, to have that conversation. And then we do have 20 men and women's sports overall that are NCAA sponsored. However, we have plenty of club and intramural level sports. So if you are not interested in playing at a collegiate varsity level, there are plenty of other ways to get involved in athletics. And then our application deadline. So if you are a senior looking to apply, our applications are currently open. So I would recommend applying as soon as possible. So we do have two early action deadlines, the first being November 15th, the second being January 15th. And those just guarantee you a decision by that second date there. So if you apply by November 15th, you'll hear back by December 15th. 
you apply by January 15th, you'll hear back by February 15th, and then you'll see our other dates there as well. Um, we do not have early decisions, so these are non-binding deadlines. Again, just guaranteeing a decision by a certain date, but you're not locked into anything. And then freshmen are required to submit official high school transcript, an essay, and a letter of recommendation. Our test scores are completely optional for us fall 2021 and spring of 2022. Um, and by optional, we actually mean test line. So students are not required to submit test scores and we will not be considering them in the application process or in the merit scholarship evaluation process. So there is no need to submit those scores and no need to wait to take the test um, if you um, were planning to it. I would just recommend applying as soon as possible without those scores because we will not need them. If you are a junior or a sophomore, maybe, uh, I would definitely check back to our website when it gets closer for you to apply because we have not extended that policy yet to the future years. It is just for fall 2021 and spring 2022 at this point. And then if you're a transfer student by chance, uh, definitely reach out to our transfer counselors because what you need is going to vary uh, highly depending on your uh, number of credits that you've completed at your other universities. Uh, but there's just a, a quick overview on the screen there. Uh, so again, just reaching out to our transfer counselors is the best way to figure out what you will need to complete your application. And then moving on to the financial side of things. So we are estimating our tuition and fees at about $42,000 a year. That is um, including all of our tuition and fees, all of our room and board. So all of the direct costs to the student that does not include books and any indirect costs like traveling and things like that. Um, but that 42,000 is our sticker price, so to speak. So that is without any financial aid applied. Don't worry about 97% of our students do receive some type of financial aid, whether that be need-based aid or merit-based aid, we do offer both. And then if you're looking for a more personalized estimate as to what you might receive in your financial aid package, definitely go online to our website to use our net price calculator. It's a really great way to get um, a more personalized estimate for your financial aid package. And then our merit-based awards for freshmen do range from four to $18,000 a year. They are going to be determined based on your unweighted GPA. Um, they are going to be evaluated at the time that you are admitted automatically. So you do not have to submit a separate application for those. Um, you'll be able to figure out your, or see your scholarship award in your acceptance letter um, as soon as you receive that. And then graduation is obviously the goal for UT. So 96% of our students do report success in their postgraduate goals, whether that be going on to grad school or going straight into the workforce. And we're a military friendly school as well. So if you're interested in ROTC, we do offer Army ROTC here on campus. And then we partner with University of South Florida to provide Navy ROTC and Air Force ROTC on their campus. And if you do not already, I definitely recommend following us on our social media platforms. It's a great way to stay up to date with the university, see some insider tours and things like that. And if you do want to visit UT, we do have in-person visits available currently. So whenever you feel safe and comfortable to visit, those op opportunities are listed on our website. You do need to RSVP in advance or register in advance to attend those in-person sessions. And of course, if you do not feel comfortable traveling, that is totally fine. We have plenty of virtual resources as well on our website, everything from our science day. So if you're interested in the sciences specifically, then I definitely recommend attending our virtual science day to learn more about all the different science degrees that we offer, like marine science, forensic science, things like that. We also have our virtual open houses, as well as our virtual department um, information sessions. So if you want to speak directly to a faculty member or professor, uh, that's a great way to do that as well. Uh, so that's all I have. If there's any questions, I will take those now. Okay, well, thank you everyone for joining us. At the close of this window, you'll see a quick four question survey appear. Uh, be sure to check out the Indiana ACAC website for additional sessions that you're able to sign up for. And then all sessions are being recorded and will be available at https 
colon slash slash inacac dot org slash virtual hyphen college hyphen exploration. Again, thank you for joining us this evening. Be sure to check out their recordings uh, as they're posted on our website.